Okay, this is a quick tutorial walking you through how to do a baseline fit and removal for a sloping baseline on a differential pulse voltammetry or VPV experiment. So this is just some student data collected uh, for the um, oxidation of ferrocene uh, through a molecular imprint polymer on a gold electrode uh, from, I think, 2021. And so you can see that there's this sort of sloping uh, baseline as you move towards more positive potentials out here to the left. Uh, and so what we'd like to do is, is uh, sort of fit this and uh, flatten it out. Um, and you can see the software actually already does this preliminary fitting and measurement. Um, so it, it kind of automatically fits this black line and then this vertical black line is where the um, peak current is measured. So this actual peak current here um, is uh, measured from this presumed zero uh, up to the to the peak here, um, which is which is pretty good. But if we wanted to actually um, uh, do this manually and then replot these, uh, this, that's the the value in this. Or sometimes um, the algorithm of the software doesn't adequately do this for you. So. To do this, you're going to navigate up in the CHI software to the baseline fitting and subtracting button. And then you're going to get this prompt. Um, what's valuable about this prompt is um, you can click this help, and this help will walk you through the specific details. Uh, it's a pretty simple help menu. menu. So it says that you need uh, two sides of the peak foot, um, and that's what this whole uh, section of inputs is here. And so really what that's saying is that you need to uh, articulate to the software where the peak is and where it's not. And so you're just putting in values of potential, a sort of range where you want to capture this peak. And there's multiple entries because sometimes you want to fit a baseline where there's multiple waves. In this case, there's only a single wave, and so we only need this first entry. So really we're saying, okay, where is this flat? And I'd say it's probably around here or even 0.6 where this starts to flatten out. Uh, we wouldn't want to pick anything up here because this is actually starting to capture a little bit of the, the, the inflection of this wave. So I'm going to put in 0.55 as my first value. And then similarly, we'll move out here and move out to a point where this flattens out again. So probably around here, so we'll say 0.15. Uh, you'll want to be consistent if you're if you're using the baseline subtraction tool here, and then in terms of the fitting orders, um, the way that this works is it's going to fit some equation in the form of a polynomial, and if it's if it's only got a one order, then it's just in the form of uh, y equals ax plus b or mx plus b. Um, if you want it second order, it's going to be then this quadratic third order, fourth order, etc. So if you have uh, a line or a, a baseline that's essentially a straight line, then it's probably going to be best fit by something on the order of a first or second order fit. Um, otherwise, it may try to overfit this. And so it's it's important to think about that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw in, um, because this looks like pretty much a straight line from here to here, that baseline becomes pretty easy to extract. Uh, so first or second, I'll see what it looks like with a second order. And then... Um, you can uh, choose down here to save or override the data. I would never override the data. Always keep it here um, in case you do a fit that's bad. Um, so no action is good. And then uh, I'm gonna use at least squares fit here. And then I'm gonna click view baseline. And you can see that it's fitting it okay, but you can see it's sort of like rising a little bit off the background. And so I'm going to uh, do a new fit here and go back to uh, fitting order one and then view the baseline. And you can see now that's a nice straight line that that's fitting. Um, and so in this case, I think the linear first order fit does best, but there may be circumstances where the curvature is not straight and you do need or want to fit it to, um, to a, a non-first order. Um, and so in this case, now we can... Um, if we like this, then I can go back to uh, view difference and it's going to replot my data uh, after subtracting out that uh, baseline fit and then I can export this data um, in the way that I'd like uh, or resave it as a new file. Just don't over, don't save over or overwrite the, the data. So if you're collecting a, a series of data like this for a calibration curve, say for a sensor, 
uh, then you can basically fit everything, replot this in Excel or in another plotting uh, software, and then you'll have these nice vertically stacked values where the uh, intensity is no longer conflated or the actual magnitude of the current is no longer conflated with an increasing background.